This is SMP Earth, which is one of the largest Earth servers on Minecraft that had the likes of Tommy in it and Technoblade play on it. This server was online in 2019, before the Dream SMP was a thing. I'm sure you've already guessed it, but there were many wars on this Earth server, and many of which included Technoblade and Tommy in it battling it out. So in this video, I'm going to go into depth on each of these wars. This is going to be an extremely long video, so grab a snack and relax. Also, please like and subscribe so I can get back into the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's get into the numerous wars on SMP Earth. The Antarctic Empire, arguably home to the most powerful of warriors, undefeated and untouchable. Business Bay, home to one of the trickiest scammers in Minecraft history, Tommy Init. Some question what would happen if these two went head to head. Well, they did. And let me tell you what happened in the Battle of the Bridges. We will start this story off in Business Bay, home to the world's renowned scammer, Tommy Init. On this day, Tommy was doing maintenance around his base, when suddenly he got a payment. A payment for a hit? Tommy may be one of the best businessmen on SMP Earth, but he was not best known for his fighting efficiency. Tommy, being the businessman he is, decided to accept this hit, but who was it on? This hit called for the death of Filza, best known for his ability to survive for long periods of time on one life. This did not scare Tommy, as he almost instantly got in his plane and started chasing down Filza, who he was tracking through the Dynamap. This did not phase Phil though, because he did have the fastest plane on the server, and Tommy did not. Filza quickly outran Tommy, and then the Antarctic forces gathered on the Boomer Bridge 2.0 in preparation of Tommy's imminent arrival. Tommy then arrived and explained the situation he was in to Techno, who did not care what Tommy was there for, he just wanted him to leave. Tommy attempted to bribe Techno $20,000 in order to avoid total war. Tommy just wanted to complete his hit and murder Filza. Techno took the money, but he was still not going to allow himself to get bribed by Tommy. Techno told himself that he would defend his comrades and his nation at all costs, even if it included dying. Tommy then finally arrived on the bridge, which caused Techno to use his trump card right off the bat, a full speed minecart rush. Techno charged at Tommy with all of his might, but Techno missed. Tommy was able to dodge it in the nick of time, laughing at Techno's miss. Tommy then advanced closer to the Antarctic Empire mainland, but then, out of nowhere, Techno used the other side of the railway and made a direct hit with his full speed minecart rush. This took away about a quarter of Tommy's health. He was baffled he was tricked so easily like that. Did Techno miss on purpose the first time? Who knows? Realizing that the railroad was the strength of the Antarctican's power, he swiftly severed the track so that anyone using a minecart on them would have their movement crippled. Tommy then advanced only to be met by an angry voiceover Pete and Technoblade. Techno and Pete decided to do a full speed dual minecart rush on Tommy, which they have both hit would cripple Tommy's health severely, but when executed, Tommy built a dirt wall in between him and the minecarts, causing this attack to fail. During this time though, Filza was sneaking around underneath the bridge and then successfully shot Tommy with his gun, to which Techno swiftly followed up and shot Tommy with his flame bow, causing Tommy to burn to death. After respawning back at Business Bay, Tommy immediately flew back to Boomer Bridge in Antarctica to retrieve his items when he lost on death. But once he went back into the chest to look for his items, some of them were missing. The Empire had stolen some of Tommy's best items, and that was his punishment for attacking them. Tommy then damaged part of the bridge, creating a hole in it, which angered voiceover Pete, who had just built it. Techno then soon came back, and the two of them scared Tommy to the end of the bridge, who got in his plane and flew off. There was a brief dogfight, but after Tommy landed two hits on Technoblade in its plane, Techno retreated, leaving Tommy to fly home safely. Tommy counted this as a victory, but many questioned if this war was a war tactic, or if he was actually serious. Techno was outraged by the damage done to his nation by Tommy, so he flew to Wilbur Soot and they discussed the banishment of Tommy from the Cumin Squad. Wilbur Soot agreed that Tommy should be exiled, not only because of the attack on Techno, but Wilbur predicted that Tommy would betray the Alliance soon, in the future. Wilbur then called in another ally of his named Soot Charlie, or Charlie for short. Charlie arrived, and soon Technoblade, Wilbur, and Charlie were on their way to do one thing. And what was that one thing? Well, Tommy damaged the Boomer Bridge, so they decided to damage the Business Bridge as well. Tommy was alerted of the squad's imminent arrival, 
so he quickly assembled some armor and hid the villagers in his nation so that they would not be harmed if the enemy breached the entrance to the main town. Tommy finished hiding the citizens just in time, and down the narrow bridge, he saw them. The Antarctic Empire, K-pop, and Newfoundland were all on this bridge, ready for all-out war. Tommy was very nervous, but then he thought to himself how effective Techno's trump card was, and the enemy was on a narrow bridge as well. Tommy, believing this to be the only option, launched a full-speed minecart rush at the group of three. Tommy caused the group to split up and ended up landing a direct hit on Wilbur, which launched him backwards. He then proceeded to knock Techno off the bridge and into the water below, and then landing some strikes, which caused him to retreat. Tommy was not going after Wilbur and Charlie, though. He wanted to go for the big fish, well, pig. He wanted to kill the Emperor of the Antarctic Empire, Technoblade. Tommy leaped into the water and started slashing Technotube with his sword, but due to some weird spell, Techno was not able to attack Tommy. Tommy brought down Techno's health to 8 hearts, when suddenly Techno broke the spell and unleashed everything he had onto Tommy, causing Tommy to lose a massive amount of health. Wilbur and Charlie then proceeded to jump off the bridge and attack Tommy from behind. Tommy was completely surrounded and had nowhere to run, so he attempted to break through Wilbur, nearly killing him. But then, Techno landed in another strike, which knocked him into Wilbur and Charlie, who then finished the job and murdered Tommy. Tommy was outraged that two people he thought were his allies betrayed him and attacked him in his own territory. Tommy then promptly crafted a new set of iron armor, and then challenged Wilbur Soot to a duel. Wilbur felt Tommy's pain and accepted the offer. The two lined up, ready themselves, and then the duel began. Both of them charged at each other at frightening speeds, trading a few hits, but then Wilbur struck Tommy with a quick succession of hits, which caused Tommy to start to retreat. Tommy then tried to create a barrier out of dirt which Wilbur quickly walked around, but then Tommy ate a golden apple, replenishing his health and giving him the will to fight to the death. Wilbur saw this and quickly called in his ally Charlie to assist him in the fight. The two of them unleashed a fury of strikes on Tommy, which ultimately led him to dying again. Tommy then responded and instantly started to gather materials to attack the duo again, though he did not gather anywhere near the armor he needed to battle again. He attacked and was quickly sent retreating again. Tommy ducked and dodged through trees and managed to keep a good distance between the enemy and himself until a creeper, aw man, not a dead meme, came out and self-destructed. This caused Tommy to die again. Wilbur then said, I do not know with what weapons World War 3 will be fought, but World War 4 will be fought with Tommy with a stick. Tommy then responded again, but this time, he instantly started running for Business Bridge to make an escape from the enemies. Techno told Wilbur that his own bridge, the Transatlantic Bridge, may be at stake if they let Tommy escape. Wilbur and Techno then got into a plane and then stopped Tommy in his tracks to which Tommy was brought up to the brink of death. Tommy cried out and pleaded for them to listen and not kill him. Techno obliged until he tried to escape again, but Wilbur stopped him by breaking the rails. Wilbur insisted that a peace treaty should be made and the war should end. After all the dueling, the group then decided it was time for a treaty. Tommy was allowed to make the first draft. His terms were, Technoblade must not claim the world. Technoblade must refer to me as an alpha male. Wilbur Soot and Soot Charlie must rejoin the Cuman squad and take back all they did. You may not call me Zombie Kid. You must pay reparations of $100,000 between you all to me. You must accept that, in battle, I did defeat Technoblade as he ran away from me like a coward. You must give me diamonds. Give me all of my things and some more. Leave Business Bay at once. Respect me and say I'm good at being funny. Techno denied all of these terms and the second draft was made, whose terms were, Tommy must declare peacetime of four days between the Antarctic Empire and himself. Tommy must not act on behalf of the Cuban squad, but alone, meaning that he could still be officially part of the Cuban squad as long as he doesn't make formal statements in the Cuban squad's name. Tommy must admit defeat, and in return, the Cuban squad and the Antarctic Empire shall acknowledge that Tommy is funny. The Cuban squad and the Antarctic Empire shall no longer interfere with Tommy's endeavors, the Cuban Squad and the Antarctic Empire, and Tommy shall speak on neutral terms. Tommy then tried to add more terms, and then an argument broke out, which caused Wilbur to throw the draft into a fireplace. Wilbur then flew away, and the peace talks officially broke down. On this day, Technoblade started his livestream, and Tommy did as well. They were both near Technoblade's castle in Antarctica and had one intent, to fight to the death. After some chatting, and Tommy exploring a bit of the castle, 
The two began dueling. Technoblade was instantly ahead because he had much better armor and weapons than Tommy. This advantage caused Tommy to die within 30 seconds. Tommy even tried to escape in a plane once he realized he was outmatched. Then after this, Tommy came back to retrieve his items and then Filza arrived and soon there was a 2v1 taking place. And again, Tommy was slain. After this death though, Techno voiced out in chat that he wanted Tommy to have an ally so that the fight would be fair, though none of Tommy's allies never showed up. After Tommy's defeats, he then persuaded Techno to fly with him to a large desert in South Africa. Techno agreed, and they both flew out there. Upon arrival though, Techno realized that Tommy might be up to something. Since the entire desert was sand, he thought it could be uh, some sort of pit trap. Techno started breaking random blocks in an attempt to trigger this trap, but to no avail. There was a very weird block of sand that was above the completely flat plane though. Tommy walked over to it and asked Techno to break a specific block. Techno said no. Eventually Tommy did it to reveal a large pit trap, which was exactly what Technoblade was suspecting. Tommy insisted that Techno should jump into the pit, and Techno denied. Techno and Tommy soon began fighting again, which caused Tommy to die, again, and then Grunk arrived to potentially be one of Tommy's allies. Then soon after, Tinmotainment and Thunder arrived, which Techno urged them to join Tommy's side. They simply put up some seats and watched as the battle ensued. At this point, Tommy had died multiple times trying to get Techno into the pit, when then Sneaksnag and Sylvie revived at the battlefield. Sylvie gave Tommy some gear, so he would be better off against Techno. Tommy then disabled his own trap, and it was revealed that it was an entity cramming trap, in which you take damage from simply being in the area inside. They eventually agreed to have one big team brawl. The teams being Techno, Sneak, and Phil fighting for the Antarctic Empire, and Tommy, Sylvie, and Grunk fighting for Business Bay. They had a countdown, and soon the battle ensued, Techno instantly chasing after Grunk. And after some skirmishing, Techno had taken very little damage and had slain Grunk. Tommy instantly chased after Sneak, because he was in gold armor. Tommy thought this would be an easy kill, but Sneak was toying with him, and was just wasting Tommy's time. Techno and Sneak then teamed up on Tommy, and eventually after knocking him into the ocean, killed him too. Sylvie, surprisingly though, was still holding her own against Filza. But then, Sneak and Techno joined in, which caused Sylvie to flee by plane, making the battle a 3-0 victory for the Antarctic Empire. The group formed an air force, and then flew over to Business Bay in order to discuss a treaty with Tommy. Techno got a book and quill, and soon wrote out the first draft terms, which were, Buy my Technoblade U2s. Comes out December 27th, 2999 free shipping worldwide. Tommy will make me a cow farm, and in return, the Antarctic Empire agrees to fulfill these requests. The Antarctic Empire and Business Bay will be neutral for three days, ending on December 22nd. Tommy then added these terms. Technoblade must pay back $20,000 to Tommy in it. Technoblade must refer to me, in parentheses Tommy, as an alpha male at all times. To which Techno accepted the $20,000 payment, but he would not accept calling Tommy an alpha male. The final terms which were agreed upon were, buy my Technoblade U2s, Tommy will make me a cow farm, the Antarctic Empire and the Business Bay will be neutral for three days, ending on December 22nd, Technoblade must pay back $20,000 to Tommy in it, and the final term, Technoblade must be referred to as an alpha male at all times. Wait, what? The last term got into the final draft? Well, Techno sneaked it in at the last second, and Tommy did not realize that he would have to call Techno an alpha male. Techno though, confirmed that he does not care about this term, but he just wants Tommy to make him a cow farm. One day, Savyoshi, who resides in the German Empire, approached Wuna 301 of Packle and Kara Corvus of the Corvarian Empire with a secret message that was not revealed to anyone but themselves. No one knows what the messages contained, but after I tell you the story, I'm sure you can infer what they contained. They soon all met up at a German claim in Northern America, where Yoshi supplied Wuna and Kara with the following. 
Splash Potions of Healing, Splash Potions of Harming, Splash Potions of Poison, and Potions of Strength? What? Why would Tsuvyoshi randomly meet up with two other allies and give them more supplies after giving them a coded message? Well, it is quite obvious. They are going to attack. Many were wondering who the trio were going to attack, but if you think about it, it's obvious. Who would require multiple people to take them down? Who would require that kind of supplies to take down? Who is the main enemy of these people? Voice over Pete? No, Technoblade. Three then got into a plane and started traveling around the globe, honing in onto North Africa, where Technoblade was currently located. Voice over Pete, one of the members of the Antarctic Empire, was notified of the upcoming attack on Techno and was bewildered that the enemy would decide to strike now. Pete quickly scrambled together some items and then got in his plane to fly to Techno's aid. Techno soon received a notification that the Corvarian Empire, led by Kara Corvus, had enemied his nation, which was quite strange considering that the two were neutral and the Antarcticans had done nothing to provoke them. Techno contacted Kara with confusion and asked her to renew their neutrality with each other. This request, though, was too late because at this time, Wuna, Kara, and Yoshi were all circling above Techno. Techno noticed them and was shocked to see a group of people ready to kill him. After some more flying, the group touched down near the claims of Connor Esports and Mario Luigi, though they were near Sneak's claim, but the Pope himself was never involved in this conflict. They started to approach Technoblade, who was in conversation with Connor Eats Pants from Connor Esports. The two groups stared at each other for a few moments until Saviyoshi, Kara, and Wuna all started moving in on the group. Techno started backing up, realizing the drastic situation he was in. Techno had no time to call for any sort of backup, and he was not prepared to fight a 3v2 battle with Connor in some unenchanted iron gear, so a 3v1.25, I'll say. Connor was the first member of the group attacked, as he was set on fire by Yoshi's sword, which caused him to sprint to the nearby ocean. The group knew that Connor was not the real target, though, so they paused their attack on Connor and marched up the hill to where the mighty Ice Emperor was standing. Techno, knowing he could potentially die, looked at them with his godly stare, hoping to instill fear in his enemies, but they just kept coming closer. The attackers were now close enough to start throwing some potions of harming, and some potions of poison. This is a side note for some of you who don't know splash potions of harming go through armor, meaning it will take 6 splash potions to kill a person with no armor, as well as taking 6 potions to kill a person with fully enchanted diamond armor. Techno saw this and then swiftly retreated by vanishing into thin air. What? Techno had literally disappeared to where there was no trace of where he was or where he is now. Wuna, Yoshi, and Kara were all astonished at what had just happened, and then back down the hill, wondering what had just happened. The group then saw Connor again, and charged at him with frightening speed. And after getting hit by Kara's fire sword, he also just disappeared. What is going on? Who knows. Pete was then closing in on the location of the attack, and started circling the air above the trio, confused at what had just took place. The attackers saw this and started firing a massive barrage of arrows towards Pete, though they were unable to land any direct hits on him. So enough with the storytelling changes I make, Techno and Connor then joined the voice chat that Yoshi, Wuna, and Kara were on, and said, go away boomers. This was because Techno was not streaming, and he did not want to get into an engagement for no reason. Him not streaming and getting into a battle had no benefit for him, because it was not content for him. Connor then asked Kara why they had attacked him, as he is clearly not Technoblade. Kara's reasoning was because the two were near each other and were associated with each other, and in Kara's eyes, that gave Connor the death sentence as well. Connor stated that actually, Connor Esports and the Antarctic Empire were not in good terms, and Connor had just murdered Alfred, the chicken Technoblade sailed across the world with. Kara then changed her mind and declared neutrality with Connor and Connor Esports. Pete then asked Kara why she would betray the alliance they had, presumably between Pete and Kara, which caused her to say that they were never actually allied and that the Corvarian Empire always maintained a neutral relationship with the Antarcticans. Techno then requested that the two nations renew their neutrality and suggested that they could schedule a war against the German Empire at a later date. Connor was also upset that his peaceful nation had now seen war because of the battles that took place there, and warned them that the UN, the server's peacekeeping neutral faction, might have to get involved. Pete was also upset because the Antarctic Empire had been providing help and resources to many others. Pete thought this attack was unnecessary and just rude. He was even creating an entire railroad and train station to connect continents together. Pete also gave this amazing quote stating, 
and in the midst of such aid and recovery, others come to take advantage of such graciousness. Techno then stated that if they wanted to create some content by going to war, they should contact him on Discord or some other social media to arrange a war. This led to the aggression dying down, and everyone started to go their separate ways. Connor left to go play a better game, which is impossible because Minecraft is the best game. Pete flew back to his bridge to continue building his train station. Kara flew back to Paris to continue building her Eiffel Tower. Yoshi and Uno both flew back to their respective nations in the Americas. Yoshi stated that they had not expected the winner of multiple PvP events to combat log and to avoid something that they excelled at. He then said, anyone who is online on the server should be ready for a battle, and war is inevitable, whether one is streaming or not. So this ambush ended in a stalemate. This might be the beginning of something big. Something much bigger than the Battle of the Bridges, the German Corvarian War, and the Packle Antarctic Disputes. This could lead to a world war. Many times people have questioned who the Franz Ferdinand of the server is. Who could a nation kill that would bring outrage to everyone on the server? It definitely wasn't Tommy, or anyone in the German Empire, Packle, and the Corvarian Empire. Who is helpless, wholesome, and someone people want to protect? The Franz Ferdinand of SMP Earth is voice over Pete. Many would be outraged if a nation had slain our wholesome boomer. All of the Antarctic Empire allies would come to their side and create two defining sides of a world war. Some who are allied with both sides would be forced to choose or be annihilated by both sides. If this ambush attempt had been targeted on voice over Pete on his train station, the war would have been taken right to the Antarctic Empire's doorstep. Let's snap back to what actually happened, and not what could have happened. This attempt to assassinate Technoblade has failed, and Techno does not stream much, so what might the ambushers do next? They already showed intent to kill Voice over Pete when he was circling above them in a plane. I think their next attack might be on Voice over Pete. This would lead to the largest war on SP Earth history, and would keep this title for a very long time. All these nations battling each other, many deaths will occur. Many victories will be had. Could an alliance of Pakal, the Corvarian Empire, the German Empire, Pakal, Business Bay, and the Kingdom of Jordan be enough to take down the mighty alliance of the Antarctic Empire, Florida, Cuba, Newfoundland, and the Bean Empire? I couldn't tell you, but what I can tell you is that this would be the first large-scale war on SMP Earth, and it would change the server as we know it. On the youngest geopolitical server in Minecraft, one war has been raging for a few weeks now, and that war is between Business Bay and the Antarctic Empire. Business Bay was losing by quite a large margin, as proven by the events in the Battle of the Bridges, which I've already made a video on, and you can find it in the description or on the top of the screen. This war may be closer than we originally expected. Make sure to comment down below who do you think will win, the Antarctic Empire or Business Bay? But now, let me tell you a little bit more about this conflict. So the now very impressive Business Bay Army, Time Dio, Bitzel, Tommy Init, and Luke, all flew over to the Antarctica Empire, near Techno's castle. They placed item frames with images that said, Tommy is angry all over the place, for a prank. Dio had another reason for showing up though. He wanted to kill Wisp, a former member of Business Bay. He wanted to kill Wisp because he said he was bad at Skyblock which angered Time Dio, as he had the most hours played on Skyblock out of any Hypixel YouTuber. Tommy though, knowing how powerful Wisp was, informed Dio that Wisp had very good armor and would most likely destroy Time Dio in combat, which would only add to the embarrassment. This story now switches over to Voice Over Pete. Pete noticed that some of the Business Bay members were in Antarctica and invited them to see his big boomer train station that was under construction. Pete also wanted to meet the new members of Business Bay, but Wisp, who was with Pete, did not allow this. Upon the Business Bay members' arrival, Wisp attacked Tommy, and Tommy attacked him back. Pete then noticed the ongoing battle, and got in his plane and attempted to airstrike the battle going on, below. Pete missed the first attempt, but on his second attempt, he flew back over them and accidentally hit himself with his own airstrike, which killed him instantly. Time Dio noticed that Pete had died, so he went over and stole the unprotected items. 
Dio then ran into the ocean to hide from Pete and Wisp. Tommy then landed a plane, to which Dio got in and flew away with all of Pete's items. Pete was not happy about this at all, and so was Wisp. Wisp threatened to blow up Business Bay into smithereens, but then went to Pete to talk about their next move. Sal C1 then arrived to help the Antarcticans in their outnumbered situation. The members of Business Bay then landed back home in Business Bay when Tommy then suggested that Dio return Pete's items so they would not anger the Emperor of the Antarctic Empire, Technoblade. Though shortly after this, Tommy remembered that the Ice Emperor did not return his own items when he killed him in combat, which led them to decide not to fly back and give Pete his items. Wisp then flew over to Business Bay and did something that has never happened on SMP Earth before. Wisp started destroying Business Bay. He destroyed a lot of the bases and then slaughtered many of their cows and released the remaining ones. Business Bay was in shambles. The structure built by Tommy was now gone, which enraged the Business Bay members. The Antarctic Empire then remembered Time Duo was still holding onto Pete's items, so they started a witch hunt and chased after him. Tommy then decided he should retaliate the only way he knew how. He issued an ultimatum, which was if the Antarctic Empire killed Dio, Tommy would kill all of the Antarctic Empire's good villagers. The Antarcticans were not having any of it though, so they prepared to follow Tommy back to what remained of his base if he stepped foot into the Empire's territory. Tommy was very intimidated by this, so he decided to turn around, which led to Time Dio not being slain. We now go to Sylvie, one of Techno's potential rivals, who was watching the battle ensue. She wanted the two nations to negotiate, so she attempted to establish a negotiation between the two. She convinced them to have one, and then acted as a moderator throughout the event. First, she offered Time Dio a protection for a diamond armor set, in exchange for giving our wholesome boomer, voiceover Pete, his items back. Throughout this entire discussion, Time Dio did not give back any of Pete's armor, as he was wearing it but he did give back some of Pete's miscellaneous items. Tommy then noticed that Sylvie was not well geared, so he suggested to Luke, one of the members of Business Bay, to attack her. They agreed, and Dio then struck Sylvie three times, killing her and stealing all of her items as well. This infuriated Sylvie, Wisp, and voiceover Pete, so they flew over to Business Bay and set fire to the storage area. Then they broke all of the enemy's chests, which severely crippled the business nation. Tommy then reinstated his original ultimatum, but the Empire completely ignored it and continued griefing. Sylvie then respawned and begged Business Bay for her items back. Tommy stated that they would only do so if she enemied the Antarctic Empire. So that's exactly what she did. Tommy and Dio gave her the majority of her items back, and right after, Sylvie retracted her enemyship with the Antarctic Empire and then enemied Business Bay instead a very sneaky but effective move. She then met up with Wisp and Pete to initiate an all-out attack on Business Bay to seal the fate for the businessmen. The battle was fierce but very short-lived as Dio and Tommy both combat logged realizing that they would lose. This was very cowardly and Sylvie and the Antarcticans were not happy about it. As the Antarctic Empire was angered by the combat log of Tommy and Dio, they decided to further grief Business Bay. The Antarctic Empire and its allies met up and began destroying all of Business Bay. After completing the destruction, the Antarctic Empire then began to create a trap in the location where the enemies logged out, and it would trigger if they joined the server again. Kara Corvus, the Emperor of the Corvarian Empire, then logged on and realized she had missed the entirety of the battle, which saddened her. But then, she found out that her Minecraft girlfriend, Sylvie, was murdered. She was furious. She flew over to Business Bay and helped create the trap for the combat loggers. She then declared war on Business Bay as well. Chip, the most powerful being on the server, who had been watching the battle unfold from far, convinced the Inquisition, which consists of Junkie Janker and Brody Animates, to help calm down the two parties involved. Ink T, Tempo, and Rob Tob, who are all former members of the Inquisition, then helped fix some of the destruction in the Business Bay area, and then destroyed the trap created by the Antarctic Empire 
and their allies, which they were not happy about. Later though, Dio did log back on and return some of Pete's items, though he couldn't return all of them because he did not have all of them. Wisp then realized he may have took this a little too far, and gave the nation a set of diamond armor and some other items that would help them rebuild stronger than ever before. Chip descended from the heavens and told the members of Business Bay that he would not intervene in the ongoing war, but he did recommend that they formally ally the Inquisition. Inkti of the Inquisition then decided to leave his nation and form a nation called Log Lagoon, which is controlled by Business Bay. Though not a large nation, this will certainly help Business Bay fight this war. The next day, Tommy realized the state that his nation was in, and he wanted to fix it. Tommy realized that this would not be the last attack and possible grief done by the Antarcticans and their allies, so he decided to reconnect with some old friends. A little backstory before this part. On the first few days of the server, an alliance called the Cuman Squad, which consisted of Tommy, Wilbur, and Charlie, was formed. This was a powerful alliance, but later broke up due to the Battle of the Bridges, which I have a video on. Wilbur and Charlie were still on neutral terms, but Tommy was removed from the alliance. Tommy contacted Charlie and asked for a new alliance. They then met up and discussed the future of the two nations. They then soon re-allied each other, which could harm the alliance between Wilbur and Charlie. This allyship is a useful one, as the two nations are very close together, K-pop being in the Koreas and Business Bay being just above them. Business Bay has been starting to rise up and become a powerhouse very quickly. They have now won a few wars and have menacing threats in Time Dio and Bitzel, who are both not newcomers to combat. They are very similar to Technoblade, the Emperor of the Antarctic Empire as their upcoming was due to Sky Wars. These two additions could sway the war and completely turn it over. Though now, as you've probably noticed, the Antarctic Empire has added Wisp to their ranks, who is a well-seasoned UHC PvPer. I know before that I had said that Sylvia is Techno's new rival, but now with the introduction of Time Dio and Bitzel, this could lead down a whole new road that I was not expecting. Back to Business Bay though, Dio and Bitzel have already wreaked havoc on the nations surrounding Business Bay, causing one of them to completely disband. If Business Bay were put into combat in ideal situations versus Techno and the rest of the Antarctic Empire, the Antarctic Empire could have a huge problem in their hands. Though, it is now hinted that the Antarctic Empire may be getting a fifth member, which would sway the momentum of the war again. I really have no clue who will win, so comment down below who you think will win. The first time everyone has come together, quarrels and conflicts set aside on the youngest geopolitical server in Minecraft. What could cause this bizarre change in attitudes by the entire planet? The moon. Before I start the actual story, I just want to say this was a really fun event to write out and talk about. So leave a like and maybe even subscribe. Also join my Discord, which the link is in the description. Now, let's go right into this adventure. We start out on the SMP Earth Twitter, when a tweet was made at 9.24am GMT, stating, It's Moon Day. Tune into your favorite creators at 9pm British Standard Time, 4pm Eastern Standard Time, and 1pm Pacific Standard Time. Big Bertha's coming. Confusion surrounded the players as who Big Bertha was, but they were also very excited to go to the moon. It was soon decided that the entire world would meet up at the top of the planet, the North Pole. Wait, everyone? Yes, you heard that right. Players named Tanning Oil and Alana VA were the first to arrive to the North Pole on planes and went to the end portal, which was deep in slumber. Many soon started arriving by plane, but some had been teleported due to some plane's instability on the server. Josh, one of the server gods, then went into the end to do, in quotes, to do some testing. Josh then equipped some diamond armor and vanished. A few moments later, a message popped up saying Josh A20 had been slain by Big Bertha. Everyone was shocked. This Big Bertha being had slain Josh, a literal god. To add to the shock and confusion, Josh added in Big Bertha defeated him in a single strike. This sent fear into many of the players. 
Once everyone arrived, it was very chaotic. It was so noisy and very hard to understand what anyone was saying. Throughout all the commotion, one of the things heard by the masses was the Antarctic Empire's Emperor, Technoblade, claim of the Dragon Egg. Many others were not happy with this, because normally there would only be one Dragon Egg, but we will soon find out that was not the case. Then, Crinios, the Emperor of the Bean Empire, and Alana VA, the leader of the Crescent Moon Clan, both stated that they had intent to claim the entire moon. They are clearly not in the same nation, so some conflict and argument arose from this. Techno then attempted to start a war to claim the Dragon Egg. Some were afraid, but many did not care to fight for the egg. The group then soon decided that they would take a group photo before they would all potentially be massacred by Big Bertha. The group took the photo and then all stood around the inactive portal, staring at it. The portal was then activated and everyone jumped in, ready and prepared to face Big Bertha. Before I talk about the actual fight, let me tell you all the members who participated. Techno, Filza, and voiceover Pete from the Antarctic Empire, Krinios and Sylvie from the Bean Empire, Time Dio and Luke or something from Business Bay, Kara Corvus from the Corvarian Empire, Alana VA from the Crescent Moon Clan, Thunder1408 from Epic, Reflex from the German Empire, Fit and Salsi1 from the Kingdom of Florida, Captain Sparkles from the Kingdom of Jordan, Grunk, Tanning Oil, and Ice Bomb from Log Lagoon, Sneak Snag from Mario Luigi, Wilbersoot and Sophie Texas from Newfoundland, Wuno301 from Packle, RT Game from the Irish, Ink T from the Palms, and Arliss Finch from Transatlantic. The group spawned in a room underneath the moon, and they were forced to mine out. A staircase was made, and the players ascended it until they eventually emerged at the surface. They then started jumping around, and found out that the gravity here was unlike Earth's at all. It took them a few seconds to fall back to the ground after jumping. Then from the horizon, they heard an ear-piercing roar. Everyone looked up in shock to see a huge creature, a very powerful ender dragon, named Big Bertha, who was capable of one-shotting anyone it touched. Everyone started preparing their hot bars, drinking potions, and some even got in planes. This was an all-out war, SMP Earth versus Big Bertha, similar to Thanos versus the Avengers. They all charged at the rampaging Big Bertha, angry that they had just entered its territory. Sneak first stated that, bro, this thing's taking no damage. And soon they really realized what they were up against, someone more powerful than the god of SMP Earth. Some individuals then noticed that there were end crystals on top of the towers, and climbed up to destroy them. Some players began to equip elytras, obtained from the fake moon landings, and gotten planes to fly around and begin an airborne assault on Big Bertha. The rest stayed on the ground, shooting arrows and attacking it with swords, even using beds and guns to try to defeat this dragon. Everyone was coming together, and was determined to defeat this dragon that could potentially destroy the moon, and maybe even their own planet. Everything was going quite well until Ink T ventured too close to the dragon and got struck once by the dragon's wings, which activated his totem of undying, which kept him alive momentarily. Instantly after getting hit though, Ink T was struck again and it killed him instantly. This shot fear into the SMP Earth players, as they had never seen a death as gruesome as this one. Soon after, Wilbur was slain by an Enderman that cornered him away from the fight. Another one down, and the dragon wasn't even close to dying. Then soon after that, Ice Bomb was also slain. Three members of SMP Earth were killed by this powerful beast. Who could defeat God himself? Aphitsy was also slain as well, when the dragon roared a toxic breath onto her. Luke or something, a member of Business Bay, was then also slain. At this point in time, Big Bertha was starting to take some damage, and had three-fourths of her health missing. The battle was going on, players dying and respawning, everyone firing arrows and attacking from air, when suddenly, Technoblade, the Ice Emperor, and Captain Sparkles, the King of the Kingdom of Jordan, realized that Big Bertha's End Crystals, which were healing her, were somehow back again after being destroyed. It was then everyone realized that the crystals were regenerating, so Big Bertha would be able to infinitely heal. Many players then kept watch on the crystals and destroyed them every time they regenerated. Then Chip, one of the server gods, launched an airstrike on Big Bertha when she landed on the ground, but it did no damage and accidentally killed Kara Corvus, the emperor of the Corvarian Empire, instead. Big Bertha's health 
was stuck at 20% for a few minutes, as not much damage was being output. But then Salsi-1, from the Floridian colony in Cuba, ran up and struck Bertha with two bed bombs, breaking the deadlock and sending her beneath 20% health. Then, after a little bit more fighting, it happened. Time Dio, a member of Business Bay, aimed his most powerful bow shot at the dragon and released it. Some swear this arrow broke the sound barrier, but no one knows for sure. The arrow then pierced Big Bertha's skin, which ended the battle with the beast. They had done it. Together, the SMP Earth community defeated a being capable of killing a god. Many people died during this fight, so let me quickly gloss over the casualties. Alana VA died to Big Bertha three times and also from a random Enderman. Ice Bomb died from Big Bertha twice. Ink T died by Big Bertha twice and was accidentally shot by Fit MC and voiceover P. Karakorvis was struck by Chip's airstrike and died. Luke or something died to Big Bertha three times. RT Game died to Big Bertha once. Thunder died to Big Bertha once as well. Time Dio fell to his death following Big Bertha's demise. Timotainment died to Big Bertha once, and Wilbursut died to a random Enderman. You will all be remembered as brave warriors who defeated Big Bertha. After the battle though, a dragon egg appeared near the end portal. The egg was moved many times in an attempt to snatch it by everyone, but just as Technoblade has claimed, he was the one who picked up the dragon egg. But then, a second egg was discovered in the weird structure next to the moon. It was discovered by Grunk, but Captain Sparkles managed to grab the egg before anyone else could. There was then a fourth egg discovered in the moon base, which was claimed by Sneak Snag. Sneak soon gave fills of the egg to get an achievement, but he also let Wilbur hold it. This backfired, as Wilbur logged out instantly, starting the Dragon Egg War. This also caused the Antarctic Empire to enemy Newfoundland. Many players have now explored further out onto the moon, and discovered a numerous amount of cities with very rare loot. Elytras and Protection 4 Diamond Armor have been discovered at these cities. Moon exploration continues to this day, but who knows what else someone will find? ARG stuff? Maybe another dragon? Big Bertha's relatives? Who knows? The war that has gone down in the history books. One of the most gruesome wars in SMP Earth history has had some new developments. The war was inactive for a while, but now it's back, and it's more intense than ever before. Time Dio and Bitzel have now actually fought up against a full power Antarctic Empire. Well, Let's go over the story before we get to that. To preface this video, it will be long. This event was a very intense battle between Business Bay and the Antarctic Empire. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Remember when I mentioned that Pete was a main target and that he was going to be attacked? Well, it happened. Tommy and Dio created a plan to ambush Pete, and then informed the rest of Business Bay about it. Obviously, they didn't do this for no reason though. Earlier in the week, Philza stole many diamonds from the Business Bay Casino, which enraged them. Their goal here was to get revenge, and some resources in exchange for the stolen diamonds. Upon the Business Bay Army's arrival, Pete had already gotten in his plane and was flying very high in the air. He was then contacted by the Business Bay members, who were angered at the Antarcticans. He apologized on his nation's behalf, though Dio would still take any revenge he could get, and claimed he would kill Pete regardless of any attempt at peace talks. Next, the Business Bay members roamed around the Antarctic Empire's territory in search for items that would make up the 50 diamonds Filza stole. Filza then logged on to see what was going on. He hid inside the villager farm, which was behind a door that the Business Bay members could not open. Time Dio then attempted to glitch in using a plane, which caused Filza to log out. Dio then used an arrow to open the door to the villager section, which let him use the villagers to potentially trade some rare items. Dio then discovered Techno's dog, Floof, 
which caused him to create a plan to steal it. Dio decided he would build a flying machine and penetrate the walls of the Antarctic Empire's castle, though this in the end does not work. Tommy then accidentally killed Alfred II, which was a gift from Alana VA. Dio, being the determined person he is, decided that no matter what anyone said, he would steal Floof. Techno was then alerted by voiceover Pete and one of his Hypixel Skyblock guildmates that Business Bay were trying to steal his dog. This caused Techno to make his first appearance on SMP Earth since the moon landing. Techno then logged on to see Time Dio attempting to break into his room in the Antarctic Empire castle. Techno then stated he would give others no content and possibly even grief the group's shared Skyblock Island if they attacked him before he set up his stream. He then counted all of his allies that were online, which were only himself, Pete, and Sal. Sal then explained that he was very underprepared for war, but he would still give his life for the Emperor. The Business Bay members then attempted to glitch into Techno's room using a plane, to which they did not succeed. Suddenly though, Tommy did succeed and got into Techno's room, alone. Tommy was slain very quickly. Though now the plane was in prime position, so the rest of Business Bay got into the room and started attacking Techno, he was baffled. Techno was shocked that they had all breached his room and were now wailing all of their pent up anger onto him. Techno then realized he would die if he stayed in this small place, so he opened up the door and sprinted out into the main area of the Antarctic Empire's castle. The trio of Business Bay members followed him out and then re-engaged in combat. Techno was currently in a 3v1 between Bitzel, Time Dio, and Luke. Dio then broke off from the fight and killed a very weak voiceover Pete and then he attempted to steal Techno's dog. He re-entered the fight and Techno was forced to eat a golden apple, that being one of his first eaten in PvP combat. Techno then attempted to change one of the castle's beacons from strength to jump boost, because he was getting hammered with a lot of damage. Techno then got Time Dio into a corner and attempted to trap him to stop the attack, though Techno failed because Dio just jumped over the place cobble. Filza then logged on to join the battle. Pete was also re-gearing up. Business Bay were about to face the original trio of the Antarctic Empire and Sal. The battle continued and Dio equipped his shield and lit Techno on fire. Techno then ate another golden apple while trying to seek refuge in his room, attacking Luke as he went. He was then cornered by Dio and Bitzel, but soon after escaped. The battle continued and Sal finally decided that he would help fight against the Business Bay members. Then Business Bay realized that they could not eat apples while in the Antarctic Empire territory. Sal and Techno would double team Bitzel, which caused him to flee out of the castle. Techno then re-entered his room and found Dio and Luke trying to steal Floof, which he couldn't even attack because he could accidentally kill Floof. He then exited the room and trapped the two in his chambers with cobblestone. Techno then attempted to convince Dio to kill the cats Kara Corvus, the Empress of the Corvarian Empire, procured for Techno weeks earlier. Filza and Pete were now geared up and ready to fight. Dio and Bitzel then escaped Techno's room and regrouped with the newly geared Tommy. The battle continued, with Sal firing arrows upon the group, Techno chasing Bitzel out of the port, and Phil attacking Dio. Techno then stormed at Bit with a tent to kill, but he was unable to reach him due to Bit having a punch enchantment on his bow. Techno then joined Phil's fight, and the two double teamed Dio, causing him to eat a notch apple. Techno then realized this was a war of attrition, so he enderpearled back into the castle and attempted to enter his room. He found Luke sitting next to Floof. Luke just said hi to him before Techno silenced him very quickly. Techno restocked his potions while Tommy was asking for peace between the nations. Due to Tommy and Luke's deaths, Tommy called for a ceasefire as both sides needed a low fire texture pack. He then asked Dio to stop fighting, which was a bad call considering Techno's armor was about to break. Techno then emerged from his castle, holding Techno Gun, his crossbow, and started gunning Dio down. Techno then saw a flying machine from earlier on the wall, causing him to resume his attack on Dio, with Sal and Pete helping as well. They then eventually decided that they would have a ceasefire to obtain a low fire texture pack. The parties both healed up and repaired their armor. Luke then began his long boat ride back to the Antarctic Empire since all of his planes were broken. Dio then as well flew back to the Antarctic Empire. Tommy asked Techno if he could enter Techno's room and would go in 
full business mode to prove that he was just there for negotiations. Techno denied and said if he came in, he would be killed. Tommy then said he would give all of his armor to Bitzel to prove he had no intention of harming Techno, to which Techno requested that he give Sal his gear. After minutes of negotiations, no agreement was reached. Tommy then gave Bit his gear anyway and attempted to enter Pearl into the room. One of Techno's dogs sustained damage, which caused Techno to threaten Tommy with being fed to his dogs. Techno was laying out many scenarios in which he could feed Tommy to his dogs, but then exited his room to plan for the upcoming battle. Dio and Tommy then attempted to push Floof out of his room, which Techno soon realized and trapped them in again. Tommy and Dio then set their spawns in Techno's bed, which will come in handy later. Techno then requested that the two leave his room and stop their attempts to steal Floof. He handed them two Ender Pearls, but they couldn't pearl out because of the claims. Techno then discovered Alana's present, Alfred II the chicken, but he never got to meet it as Tommy had killed it earlier. Tommy and Dio then had a dilemma on their hands. They were pondering if they could kill Floof. Tommy pulled his chat and found around 66% of people wanted to kill Floof. Techno then mined into the room to let them out, when Dio spawned a plane in the door, preventing it from being closed or open ever again. Techno then entered and got a high fived by Tommy, which caused Techno to hit Tommy with his axe instead. Techno informed the Business Bay duo that if they continued stalling, the fifth member of the Antarctic Empire, Calvin, would join and bolster their forces severely. Tommy tried to convince Techno that he should have a 1v1 with Dio and that Tommy himself would take care of Floof. Techno denied this, saying Floof needed no care from Tommy. Dio then exited the room, leaving Tommy inside with many dogs. Techno then trapped Tommy inside. Tommy attempted to get Dio back in the room to kill Floof, because he did not want to do it himself. Techno then entered the room, and immediately, Tommy called out for Dio to kill Floof. Dio flew into the door, and struck Floof a few times, causing him to die. As we left off, Dio just killed Floof. This caused Techno and the rest of the Empire to charge after Dio. Sal quickly defeated Tommy while he was trying to climb the stairs. The main fight though was between Dio and the Antarctic Empire. Dio ran around the castle and soon realized that he was actually trapped inside with four raging players chasing after him. Tommy then spawned a plane on the top floor of the castle against some glass so that him and Dio could break out. Dio fought his way upstairs, and then got into the plane. Tommy despawned the plane, but only Tommy got out, not Dio. Dio then tried to spawn his own plane to try to escape, but to no avail since the Antarctic Empire and Sal were pushing his plane away from the window. Dio then soon realized he was able to eat any notch apples in the Antarctic Empire's claim, and so he made one final attempt to escape but was ultimately slain by Filza after a long battle. Dio and Tommy kept respawning at Techno's bed, as they had slept in it and were spawn killed many times. Some arguments occurred about being toxic and the death of Floof, but in the end, Josh just ended up breaking the bed the duo were stuck at, ending the spawn killing. Bitzel then hid inside of his base and begged the Antarctic Empire to spare him. Bitzel stated that he said killing Floof was a bad idea and that he was against the decision. Techno ignored this. Techno and Sal then gathered some TNT in an attempt to lure the Business Bay member out. During this time though, Techno was preventing the Business Bay members from breaking back into the castle to retrieve their items. Tommy then asked Techno to spare Bitzel, but again, Techno ignored it and claimed guilty by association. Some small arguing went down about who was winning, but in the end, majority agreed that the Antarctic Empire came out on top so far. Tommy then asked for his items back, but then Techno asked Tommy for his dog back. The two argued for a bit, but then Techno asked for multiple diamond blocks compensation. As Sal neared in with TNT, Bitzel told Tommy that he had his gear, which caused Tommy to begin his efforts to let Bitzel escape. The Antarctic Empire then demanded heavy war reparations for the loss of Floof, when suddenly, Bitzel attempted to escape, but he realized he could only go up, right into the Antarctic Empire's hands. Bitzel then decided to meet his fate, so he put all of his items into an ender chest, and prepared for the worst. Though throughout the entire time, Sal C1 was using TNT to enter Bitzel's spot, and well, he had just arrived. Sal C1 attempted to hit Bitzel, but he was unable to due to their faction's relationships. Bitzel then placed some cobble behind Sal, which trapped him there. Bitzel then exited his hole and was met by Filza, 
who shot him and killed him very quickly. Though when Filza and Techno were distracted, Luke and Tommy made their way to the Antarctic Empire and were preparing to kill the remaining dogs. This failed, as Techno and Phil caught on in time and slayed the two. Though not before, Tommy was able to kill Doggo, which was quickly replaced via breeding. We then go back to Salsi one who escaped using an archaic command called Slash F Stuck. Basically what it does is it teleports you to the surface while you're in an enemy claim, but not in combat. With this development, the Antarctic Empire and Sal then honed in on Business Bay, demanding war reparations. Techno and Sal approached the faction, demanding diamond blocks, or they could pay them with cash. Tommy denied this request many times, so Techno and Sal threatened death. Bitzel, who was known for Sky Wars traps, had created a trap at his house and attempted to get Techno to enter it, but Techno assumed right and did not enter it. Techno kept requesting money while killing various members of Business Bay. Tommy claimed that Business Bay had no diamonds or any money, but their bell top said otherwise. Techno then demanded the Twitch Prime Shrine be dismantled and its resources be given to the Antarcticans. Business Bay denied this, so the Antarctic Empire got TNT and created a cannon to dislodge the diamond blocks from the shrine. This plan failed though, as the members of Business Bay began placing water all over the shrine. Techno then pointed out that the $100,000 he requested was actually in Tommy's possession. Dio was done messing around with this shit, as he gave Techno 20 k and received his own freedom. This took the total Business Bay needed to pay down by 20 k so they now owed $80,000. Tommy still refused to pay the Antarcticans anything though, and logged out. Sal then threatened to make a sand cannon to remove the water from the shrine, which scared the offline Tommy. Tommy then sent 80 k to Dio, so he could pay Techno the remaining amount. Upon receiving the money, Techno deleted his claim on Business Bay and left. On the youngest geopolitical server in Minecraft, Things have been getting more intense. Griefings, mass killings, hour-long battles, but no war as of yet has been more intense than that war. What war am I talking about? I'm talking about the God War. A war that involved the nation of Business Bay and God. Yes, Business Bay fought a war against one of the gods of SMP Earth, but did they win? Before I start the story, comment down below who you think won the war. The god of SMP Earth or Business Bay? Also, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, maybe even follow me on Twitter as well. Enough of myself advertising, and let's get into the story. The story starts in the nation of Business Bay, a nation focused on business. <clears throat> Scam. Tommy in it, Luke or something, Time Dio, and Bitzel at this point in time were new to the server and new to Business Bay as well, as Dio and Bit had just joined the nation that day. They got out of conflict with another nation when suddenly, Chip, one of the two SMP Earth server gods, appeared in their claim. The members were confused as why Chip had appeared so suddenly, but soon, it was clear why. Chip was there to do business. Chip wanted to make a deal with Business Bay that would involve mining. The deal was that if he ever accidentally mined under the business nation's territory, he would not be killed but he would also have to give back all of the resources he mined. Tommy then decided that this deal was fair for both parties, so he agreed to it. Chip then soon left the game, but not before the other god of SMP Earth, known as Josh A20, was able to teleport to Chip. Josh started messing around and trolling some of the Business Bay members with posters and specifically a Knockback 70, Punch 70 stick. Though only the Knockback 70 enchantment on the stick was effective, since Punch only works on bows, the weapon was still extremely rare and useful. Josh started using the stick against some of the members, launching them back many blocks and also dealing a lot of indirect damage to them via fall damage. But then, suddenly Tommy was able to take hold of the stick. He quickly then reacted to the acquisition of the stick by putting it in his ender chest so it could be used in future battles. Josh saw this though, and what was already divine intervention became divine thievery, as Josh used his powers and stole the knockback stick from Tommy's ender chest. Tommy did not realize this until Josh suddenly started using a knockback stick again. He then checked his ender chest and found it was gone. This started the actual battle in the God War. As stated in the prologue, Josh stealing back the knockback stick was what escalated this conflict into a war. After Tommy realized that his stick was stolen, he informed the rest of the Business Bay members, and they were all baffled that a god who was worshipped by many 
would do something this sinister and evil. Divine intervention was a taboo on the server, but Josh did not give a fuck. Dio then started chasing after the unarmored Josh, who ran around some trees, but after taking a few hits from the Business Bay members, vanished. Yes, the god of the server decided to use even more of his powers to slash vanish himself, making himself invisible and invulnerable to all of the Business Bay members. The Business Bay members were now on edge. Josh could be anywhere, and could reappear at any moment. They then discussed their options, and soon agreed that they should go into the Business Bay Towers and look around the landscape to try and locate God. After climbing the tower and entering the bridge area of it, they then realized that they were out in the open and could be launched off the tower's bridge with a knockback stick at any moment. Tommy brushed this off as Dio claimed he saw a figure in a tree nearby. Bitzel was then hit by an arrow that launched him off the bridge, causing his first death ever on the SMP Earth server. Dio was then also struck and fell off the bridge. He attempted to hit an MLG water bucket, but failed and died, this also being his first death on SMP Earth. Both of them then retrieved the gear as Tommy then exited the tower. They then saw Josh in full enchanted diamond armor. This diamond gear was expected to be above the normal enchantment limit of protection 4 and a breaking 3. Tommy was then even more motivated to kill him, as if they did, they would attain some overpowered gear which could be used to kill Technoblade. They then chased Josh around the Business Bay claim, and eventually, he ran into the towers, which the group trapped him in by closing off the entrance. The group were striking him insanely fast, diminishing its armor durability and bringing hope into the members of Business Bay. But then, Luke accidentally broke the barrier sealing Josh in, which Josh noticed, and he used it as his escape route. The group then chased him down Business Bridge for a little bit, but then, he jumped into the water and swiftly vanished. The members of Business Bay were outraged with this unfairness as clearly they did not have access to this knockback stick or any of the abilities Josh used. Josh heard the Business Bay members outcry and as gracious as he is, he told them he would continue the fight without using any of his powers. A few more minutes of fighting took place until Tommy then demanded that God use his powers to repair their armor. Right after Josh said he wouldn't use them, Josh technically went against his own words to repair their armor, but Business Bay was clearly not mad about that. Tommy really did not want to continue this war, as it seemed like Josh had an endless supply of Notch Apples, which could keep him alive indefinitely. Bitzel, then out of nowhere, launched a surprise attack on God, which broke his helmet. This attack caused Business Bay to have hope. If they could break God's armor, they could potentially defeat him. Tommy, who was not experienced at combat, created a tactic which was actually ingenious. He ordered the Business Bay members to circle around Josh and push him downhill and towards the water. This was so effective because Josh was unable to use his knockback stick to get fall damage. I mean, you only take fall damage if you fall, but you can't really fall if you're getting hit against the hill. This worked for a few minutes, as they had a long drawn out battle while running through the plentiful amount of trees surrounding Business Bay. Though the Business Bay members had landed many strikes on Josh, he still continued to eat golden apples. They now knew for sure their only chance at winning was by breaking his armor. The members had noticed one thing through the majority of the fight though. Josh seemed to be targeting Dio a lot compared to the other members. They then realized Dio was Josh's target. Dio then stated he was on low health, which caused Josh to charge at him with godly speeds, though the members of Business Bay were able to use their barricade tactic in order to fend him off. This caused Josh to sprint into the ocean, and a chase ensued, though he had a slow one. Bitzel had broke Tommy's plane earlier, so they had to resort to placing blocks to reach Josh. Luke placed the magma blocks instead of cobble or dirt, so when Josh looped around attempting to reach the shore, his armor took durability damage. The groups were engaged and fought a little bit more until Dio was sniped by Josh, which caused him to die a second time to God. During the last wave, at some point, Josh's boots broke. Once again, even more hope for the Business Bay members, but now, they were enraged by the death of Dio. Josh taunted them by claiming he could get 2 million views with an I Killed Time Dio in SMP Earth video. This made the Business Bay members even more enraged. They were furious. A gearless Dio then attempted to attack Josh, but when Josh retaliated, Business Bay protected him, a wall that would never fall. That's what they became. The two groups fought, doing some more boat battles and bow spam wars, until Bitzel cornered Josh against the hill. The area where he was cornered was two blocks high, so Josh's only escape route 
was directly at Bitzel. Bitzel landed a few strikes on him, which lowered his health severely. Tommy then charged at Josh and struck him once. It had happened. Business Bay had weakened Josh so much, to a point where he only had pants and a shirt, and he was unable to keep any health. Josh had been slain by Business Bay, specifically with Tommy's sword, known as the Slayer of Boomers. The members of Business Bay demanded some sort of compensation for this battle. They had used a lot of resources such as food, armor, and weaponry. During this battle, some light griefing was also done by placing blocks everywhere. Initially, Josh didn't give them anything in compensation, which caused Bitzel, a well-known Skywars trapper, to trap Josh and allow each of the Business Bay members to kill him. Josh had now died multiple times, and then was forced into business negotiations with the business nation. Josh really was not interested in business negotiations with the group, so he tried giving them some random items, and used some of his powers to try to distract the group from what had just happened. Soon the businessman members caught on to Josh's schemes though. Josh then forked over an airstrike, which was accidentally used by Tommy. He also gave them 40-41 to 41 diamonds apiece, for a grand total of 162 diamonds between all of them. He later stated that he didn't really mean to give them that much, but it is what it is. He also gave them a jump boost slash gliding effect, which was the teaser for the moon event that was scheduled to be soon after. Josh also gave them some command blocks, which teleported the player 700 blocks in the air, and the goal was to try to MLG water bucket and not die. But after many attempts from everyone, only Dio was able to complete it. Overall, the business made members were originally angry at the sudden war, but in the end, everyone got content and rewards from it. The Dragon Egg, a rare item in every Minecraft world, a trophy for beating the number one boss of Minecraft. Normally there is only one Dragon Egg per Minecraft world, but not on SMP Earth. On the youngest geopolitical server in Minecraft, there are actually five Dragon Eggs due to the real and fake moon landings. Today, we are going to be talking about the fourth Dragon Egg, as it has some history and events behind it. Also comment down below what nation you support most on SMP Earth. Anyways, sit back and enjoy this SMP Earth history video. Also, leave a like and subscribe to see future SMP Earth content. The story starts on the moon. After defeating Big Bertha, the Ender Dragon of SMP Earth, a dragon egg spawned on the exit fountain. This happens in every Minecraft world after defeating the Ender Dragon, so this was expected. What was unexpected though was that there were three more dragon eggs hidden around the main end island. One was found in the octangular structure by Grunk, but later claimed by Captain Sparkles. Another was located in the hidden moon base beneath the main end island. This is the egg that started the Dragon Egg War. You see, in Minecraft you get an achievement for holding the dragon egg, and some of the players wanted that achievement. Sneak being the one who found the base, took hold of the dragon egg and got the achievement. He was then asked by Filza, an ally to his country, to hold the dragon egg so he could get the achievement as well. Sneak agreed and passed Filza the egg granting him the achievement. Wilbur, who was an ally of the Antarctic Empire, keep in mind, asked Filza if he could hold the dragon egg so he could get the achievement as well. Filza agreed and gave the egg to Wilbur and he got the achievement. Though right after this, Wilbur logged off of the server, holding the egg, and left the voice chat as well. This was seen as an act of war, and started the first Dragon Egg War. Yes, there's another, and I might cover it another time. This act angered the Antarctic Empire, and especially Technoblade. The Empire were trying to get every egg, but since Wilbur took the egg, they could not complete their goal, or so Wilbur says. Since the Antarcticans were angry and Wilbur was not online, they took their wrath out on the only other member online of Newfoundland, Sophie Texas. I know I mispronounced Newfoundland a lot and I looked up the pronunciation and this is how it said to pronounce it so if I'm still mispronouncing it, well that's just a rip then. She was quickly met by Technoblade who did not intend to kill her, but after some scuffling he accidentally did. Sophie did later return, but due to his mistake earlier, Techno only punched Sophie until she ran back through the end portal to escape. Wilbur then logged back into the server a few days later 
and was instantly contacted by Filza to go into negotiations. Wilbur constructed a landing strip above the ocean, and let Filza land there. After landing, Filza got into Wilbur's plane, and they both flew to Newfoundland to begin negotiations. After landing, negotiations did not last long, as Wilbur soon asked Filza to place down an ender chest so he could take the dragon egg out. This was a bluff, as Wilbur still had the egg in his inventory. He then placed the egg in the ender chest and informed Phil he had just been bamboozled for a second time. Phil was angry at this point, and after his chat informed him that Wilbur's spawn point was nearby, he spawn killed him many times. Wilbur then taunted Phil by telling him no matter how many times that he killed him, it would not change the fact that Wilbur still had the dragon egg. Phil continued killing him, still full with rage, but then Wilbur logged off again. Phil broke a single block on a nearby building to declare his intent to grief Business Bay, but ultimately he decided against it. Phil acknowledged that he had just been wrecked twice by Wilbur's ability to lie. Phil also said that he would not want to play poker with Wilbur as well. He then realized he needed something to fight back with. Something important to Wilbur. P-Dog, the national animal of Newfoundland, was the perfect target. Filza used some x-ray glitching and searching methods and eventually found what he thought was P-Dog. Phil then started dog napping the dog until his chat informed him that that was actually not P-Dog. Phil got a bit annoyed at this and he had already made some progress back to the Antarctic Empire. He then flew around Newfoundland searching for P-Dog and eventually, through some mistakes by Sophie Texas, found out that P-Dog lived in a yellow house and had a yellow collar. This was all Phil needed as he soon found P-Dog and got him to the ocean, bringing him all the way from Newfoundland to the Antarctic Empire's main base. Phil also told Sophie that if she had lied to him, he would kill the entirety of the dogs remaining at Newfoundland. After traveling for what felt like months, Philza finally reached Antarctica, which caused him to end his stream to find a good spot to hide P-Dog. We cut to the next day, when Sophie was building her train station, when suddenly, her chat was screaming that the remaining dogs had been kidnapped. Fearing for her dog's safety, she rushed over to the doghouse and found a picture of P-Dog, along with a book that had a message written inside of it. The book read, I have P-Dog. He is safe. For now. You have until Monday 15th, January, to give me the dragon egg you stole from us, or he will be executed. Glory to the A.E. Kara Corvus, the Empress of the Corvarian Empire, soon heard about the dog napping of P-Dog and quickly rushed to Antarctica to try and save it. Kara arrived and used the same piston x-ray glitch Phil used to find the fake P-Dog and found the real P-Dog hidden. Kara then retrieved P-Dog and set on a journey to return it to its home. Phil was notified by Twitter of this event and quickly logged on and intercepted Kara mid-dog napping. He then recaptured P-Dog and explained the situation going on to Kara and after some brief discussion, agreed that P-Dog should be treated humanely and with care. Wilbur then finally logged onto the server and quickly found the love letter and map art Phil had left for him. Pete then told him he had heard horrible, horrible things, but he was very vague as to what was horrible. He read the book and went into a panic. It was already the 14th of January, and if you can recall, Filsa said P-Dog would be killed on the 15th. Wilbur quickly called Sophie and asked for her help. They discussed the current situation and agreed that they were no match for the might of the Antarctic Empire. Wilbur made his way to the Eiffel Tower that Sophie had built, and they went to a restaurant to have a meal. Wilbur joked about how there was only a few hours until P-Dog was slain, but inside, he was in fear for his dog's safety. Voiceover Pete had also mentioned to Wilbur that he was saddened by the fighting between mates. After the meal, Wilbur requested that Phil's join the voice chat so that he could return the dragon egg and get back P-Dog. Phil was reluctant at first because he had already been tricked two times and was unwilling to get tricked again. Wilbur though requested to be picked up by Phil so they could negotiate. Phil agreed and flew to pick Wilbur up. They both flew back to the Antarctic Empire and began discussing the situation they were in. Wilbur then explained to his chat that he had the dragon egg, and due to the Antarctic Empire needing Wilbur's egg, the Empire stole P-Dog so they could get Wilbur to hand it over. Everyone called Wilbur out for lying, 
and also, one viewer pointed out that it was originally Sneak Snag's egg. Wilbur denied all of the accusations his chat was making and rejoined the voice chat with Filza. Wilbur then continued his mind games with Filza and reminded him that he had been tricked multiple times. Wilbur also stated his disliking of the area around Techno's castle and called it ugly. He did say he liked Phil's iron farm though. Wilbur then explored more of the Antarctic Empire's land to stall as Sylvie and Sophie were both on their way. After arrival, Wilbur asked the two if they had lava buckets, which Techno noticed and called him out for. As Wilbur stood on the ARG sundial, he noted that the Empire was trying to seize all the dragon eggs, but it was met with backlash from the Antarctic Empire. As Phil stated, he only wanted to return the egg to Sneak. Wilbur began speaking again, but just as he started, a creeper came up from right behind and killed him. Pete stated that everything had gone to plan, and Philza had gotten his revenge. Wilbur then explained that they both had something the other wanted, and that he only took the egg because Philza already owned one, and Sneak would most likely not want it back. Wilbur then claimed he would likely burn the egg if P-Dog was slain, and that he had the power to determine P-Dog's fate. All the while, Sophie was begging for Wilbur to hand over the egg so that they could get their beloved P-Dog back. Pete then claimed that Wilbur had no heart, and that Wilbur did not care for his dog. Wilbur then replied with the Antarctic Empire had committed an act of terrorism. Phil then shut Wilbur up by laying out the situation. He had tricked the egg off of him and Sneak, which was a betrayal of the group's friendship. Phil then allowed Wilbur to go see P-Dog, so that he could pull some emotional strings. Turns out, Wilbur really didn't care about P-Dog as he pulled a grenade out and threw it at the dog. Philza simply picked up the grenade and noted that he had not pulled the pin, so it wouldn't explode. Sophie was angry at Wilbur and told him he was not allowed to negotiate anymore. Wilbur then realized he had no choice but to hand the egg back. So, he went into his ender chest and took out the egg, but he also crafted a minecart. Many were confused, but suddenly, he bolted towards the Antarctic Empire's bridge to try to escape. The game wouldn't allow him to place the minecart though, and he was quickly killed by a flying Phil. Phil had finally retrieved the egg. Wilbur respawned and then pulled his chat to convince Phil to give him the dog back. Surprisingly, 60% of Wilbur's chat agreed that he should not get P-Dog back. Wilbur said he was confused why his chat had pulled this as they all loved P-Dog. Phil ultimately gave Wilbur another choice and it was decided that Sophie would get custody of P-Dog as she was the one who took care of him anyways. Phil then gave Wilbur a grenade and opened a hole in P-Dog's prison. Phil wanted to see Wilbur's true colors. Wilbur threw the first grenade, but not at P-Dog. Phil then gave him another grenade and told him if Wilbur killed P-Dog himself, Phil would give Wilbur the egg they had been fighting over. Wilbur gave the grenade back and told him that he would rather have Sophie take care of P-Dog than kill it. Phil suddenly then executed P-Dog, which shocked Wilbur and Sophie. They sprinted out of the prison and headed straight towards Phil's plane, but not before he explained that that was a fake P-Dog and not the real one. This was a relief to Wilbur and Sophie as they thought P-Dog had just been killed. Wilbur was done with this and threw a grenade at his feet and killed himself. Phil then gave custody of P-Dog to Sophie and P-Dog was returned home. Last week, I told you about a story. A story of the first Dragon Egg War. As I alluded to in that video, there has also been a second Dragon Egg War as well. On the youngest geopolitical server in Minecraft, there have been a total of 5 Dragon Eggs throughout the server's history. Now, at this point, 2 of these eggs have been fought over, so let's go through exactly what happened in the second Dragon Egg War between Business Bay and the Corvarian Empire. Make sure to comment who your favorite content creator on SMP Earth is, and also, don't forget to subscribe. On day 69, no jokes in the comments please, Time Dio exploited the Herobrine glitch on SMP Earth. I'm not going to go into great detail about this glitch, but basically you could grind out kills on Herobrine, and when you killed him, you would receive a golden apple. Once again, Dio exploited this and gained a huge stash of golden apples, ready to be used in combat. He showed his stash to the leader of Business Bay, Tommy Innit, and he was shocked to see Dio in possession of such immense power. They then decided that with this newfound power, they should go and attack someone. Who you may ask? Kara Corvus, the Empress of the Corvarian Empire, was the target, but specifically her dragon egg. Tommy and Dio discussed why they would target her, and narrowed it down to a few reasons. Kara was not a nice person. Kara had claimed a massive amount of land for no reason, 
and because of these two factors, it limited the amount of expansion the Nation of Business Bay could do. Kara was soon alerted by her chat of the plan being concocted by the Business Bay duo, which caused her to fly back to Constantinople, the capital of the Corvarian Empire, and then hide her dragon egg in her ender chest. She then replaced it with the turtle egg as a joke. Dio was then informed of this action and dragged Tommy into his plane. They took off and flew to Constantinople to meet with Kara. The two Business Bay members would march to the Imperial Palace, stunned with how elegant the landscape and surrounding buildings were. Dio then spotted Kara and swiftly slash F enemied her, though she escaped from Dio's attacks. They all joined a voice chat with each other to discuss the slowly brewing conflict. Tommy did not directly say what the duo was after, but Kara and everyone's chats knew. He was there for the dragon egg. Kara then asked the both of them to remove their armor so she could speak to them without doubt of an ambush. Dio declined this request. After this, Tommy continued to try to get a face-to-face -face meeting with Kara, and eventually convinced her to stand on a nearby balcony. Tommy and Dio then used some stairs to actually get face-to-face -face with her, and then negotiations began. Tommy then tried to get Kara to unclaim the Corvarian China claim, as he did not want a big claim next to theirs, saying, Hong Kong. Kara stated that Tommy could claim any part of China he wanted, though Tommy refused this offer. During this time though, Dio was asking his chat if they should assassinate Kara. Tommy insisted that the Corvarian China claim should be considered griefing, but Kara still denied this. Dio and Tommy then broke into Kara's room and seized her dragon head, which she did not approve of. Remember how Dio was planning to kill Kara? Well, he and Tommy decided it was to be done. The two Business Bay businessmen would slay the Empress of the Corvarian Empire. They then spawn killed her multiple times while she would request her armor to be returned. Tommy then said that if she wanted her items back, she would have to fork over the dragon egg. Kara denied this offer and logged off. Even after Dio threatened to blow up Constantinople, she did not log back on. She then stated that her items were easily replaceable, and the egg was not. Tommy then asked Kara what they could do, and what they could give her in order to obtain the egg. She sat in silence for a second, and she thought, until she stated that it was never going to happen. She also explained to them that she had to go through a long quest to obtain that egg. She then pointed out that they hadn't even given her a chance to unclaim any land, but they ignored this statement. Dio would then obsidian trap Kara once she longed back on and claimed that what the businessmen were doing was griefing, not RP. Tommy and Dio then left the voice chat to come up with more ideas to get the egg from Kara. They thought of buying the egg, but Kara simply refused this offer. Kara then used the slash F stuck command to escape her obsidian enclosure, but not before Dio broke in and tried to stop her. She punched Dio once and then instantly teleported outside of the palace. She then took off in her plane and circled the palace, ungeared and unarmed. Pete then joined their voice call and made a suggestion, animals. As you can recall in the first Dragon Egg War, an animal, P-Dog, was used to coax the egg holder into giving the kidnapper the egg. Pete suggested that Kara might have a soft spot for animals, and they took this advice directly to heart. Kara then stated that her dogs were completely off limits for in and out of RP action as a fan had paid $100 for the naming of that dog. Dio ignored all of Kara's statements and kidnapped Kara's foxes, while Tommy went into a voice chat and told her that your grandchild would be becoming my grandchild. Kara again refused stating that she would never give away a child. Kara then realized her foxes were being kidnapped and reiterated that the dogs were off limits and she would not RP with them if they continued to take them, but would if Business Bay members handed the foxes back. They denied this and continued stealing the foxes. Kara then said that Tommy was never going to get her egg, RP or not. Dio continued boating the fox away as the two Business Bay members could chat with Pete. Tommy was confused if Kara was being for real or if she was joking, so he asked his chat for help. Through some digging, they found that a viewer had paid lots of money to name the fox something special. Pete then went into Kara's VC to speak to her about the situation on hand. Kara stated that she did not need the Antarctic Empire's charity, but would be okay if he came and helped out. She also stated that everything would turn out okay. 
Unknown to Business Bay, a storm was arising. A small battalion nicknamed the Simp Army from Log Lagoon was forming. Soft Willie handed Kara all of his gear once they arrived, so she could continue fighting, and also ordered the simps to go kill Tommy and Dio. Dinkster then recommended they make a flying bomber machine to destroy Business Bay if they did not surrender. The simp army then threatened the two Business Bay members with repercussions if they continued to steal Kara's fox. Dio rode around the sea and said if Kara wanted the fox back, she could simply give them the egg. Pete then joined their VC and told them that Kara would take it very personally if the fox got injured, and Dio then restated that all she had to do was give him the egg. Dio continued rowing through multiple oceans and seas as Tommy attempted to negotiate with the simp army and Kara, but to no avail. Tommy then said he would either take the dragon egg or Hong Kong in return for her fox, but Kara again stated that Tommy was free to claim any part of China. Tommy then noticed that Log Lagoon had slash F enemied them and accused the group of simping. Soft Willie denied this claim, but Ink T was open to it and agreed. They were confused as to why their allies would help their enemy and change sides so suddenly. Dio's Chet, though, was begging him to kill the fox, but Dio had some morals and denied this cry. Dinkster then suddenly ambushed Dio, but Dio was able to row away with his boat. Then the simp army attempted to attack Tommy, but also missed the chance as Tommy got in his plane and flew away. Tommy then got serious and told Kara they would kill the fox if they did not hand over the egg immediately. This angered Kara and the simps even further. Kara responded to this by making fun of Tommy and Pete's last place placement in Minecraft Saturdays, which angered Tommy and caused them to attempt to get Bitzel online. She then told Tommy that they should go after the Antarctic Empire because they have two eggs and she only had one. Josh A20, the server god, then logged on, which gave hope to Kara. She told them all that Josh would smite them, though he ultimately did not, because the fox was in close proximity to Dio, and if he did smite them, it would cause Kara's fox to die. Tommy then defined Business Bay as stealing and ransoming, causing Kara to state, I don't negotiate with terrorists. An attempt to barter for Business Bay's friendship was also rejected, with Kara saying, Your friendship is not worth my grandchild. I will now read an excerpt from the wiki because I believe that they beautifully wrote this last part. During this time, Dio continued to be chased around by his adversaries. As they drew near, he warned them that should they break the boat, he would kill the fox. Tommy was then just sort of done with the situation and wanted to return all that he took from Kara, including the fox. Dio was unwilling to give up the fox, just like any anime protagonist, he did not want to give up. They joined a global VC, and Tommy came ashore to return the items he had. Tommy then messaged Dio that he should return the fox as it had a 0% chance of becoming content. Dio stated that he would not kill it, but that he actually wanted to stash it away for negotiations at some point in the future. Dio then landed in a chunk of Kievan Rus and boxed the fox in with stone and then claimed the chunk so that no one could break it. A creeper nearly killed the fox, but Snowball survived, with little health. The simp army and Kara then arrived to attack in a lone Dio, though his armor and weaponry were too powerful for the allied forces to handle. They tried to coax Dio to fight them by telling him Soft Willy had no armor and it was all on Queen Kara. There was a standoff between Dio and the simp army members. I'm gonna read an excerpt from the wiki. Dio then plotted with his chat to defend the area with water. Dio would then walk around the area pursued by others, with Tommy briefly logging back in. Dio would then cover the box with water, prompting Dinkster to attack the former several times. The stalemate resumed after Dio backed away from the box. He also added that he didn't have enough enchantment bottles for a lengthy battle. He analyzed the situation, noting that he refused to fight under these circumstances. Tommy joined back briefly during a fight between Dio and Dinkster, though Dio was reassured that he would be fine, and the fox was secured. Dinkster gave an ultimatum to Dio, remove the land claims within his territory within 24 hours or he will suffer consequences. Dio accepted, explaining he would definitely move it within a day's time, but only if everyone was over 1000 blocks away from the area. 
Soft Willy and Dio had a brief punch fight, though nothing came of it. Dio continued to analyze the situation, stating that neither Kara nor himself were willing to budge. Dio commented that if he killed Kara, he would be surrounded and attacked by several other players. Dio would kill Kara and Isaac in battle, though he was ultimately forced to barricade himself in within a bunker in his claim. Dio would also nearly kill Soft Willy with a fall trap, though the latter would log out. Dio escaped immediately after the group moved away and flew back to Business Bay to collect enchantment bottles to repair his armor. Dio stacked up on pearls, EXP bottles, and armor sets and flew back to the Fox's prison in Kievan Rus with Bitzel. They had several small fights once they arrived, and they also killed Kara a few more times until Dio felt bad and gave Kara all of her gear back, but once again, not the Fox. The Simp army then attempted to create multiple flying machines to breach the prison but to no avail as Dio and Bitzel would ambush them and halt their progress. After some more talking and a flying machine actually reaching the wall of the prison, Kara flew to Business Bay along with Dio so he could give her her items back. Kara then arrived back at the Fox's prison and was met by Soft Willy who tried to convince Kara to double cross Dio but at that point everyone was done fighting and just wanted to go home. Dio unclaimed his land in Kiev on Rus and Kara also retrieved her fox and brought it back to the Corvarian Empire. On day 94, Tommy and Bitzel were roaming around Business Bay, building a trap that would bring the victim to the void, and just straight up vibing. They were starting to get bored when they suddenly found out that one of Tommy and its good friends, Tubbo, started a hitman business. One note is that Tubbo is close to Tommy IRL, but on SMP Earth, Tubbo has tried to start numerous fights with Tommy, one even involving a huge flying bomber, even larger than the ones Dinkster created during the Angel Dust Crusade. Tommy and Bit were now content with putting a hit out for someone, but who? The person had to be online, but there weren't many online at this time, and they also had to be content. These two requirements left only one option other than Tubbo himself. Voice over Pete. Yes, I know you're probably angry that Business Bay has decided to put a hit out for Pete, and it might seem they even seem to pick on him quite a bit, I swear. Pete and Business Bay have been actual friends since the attempted evasion of the Antarctic Empire, so don't hate on them. But alas, Tommy and Bit set a hit out for Pete, and notified Tubbo of their request. Obviously, they were reluctant to go through with it, but they wanted to see if Tubbo was an actual hitman through and through. It's a tough decision to assassinate the wholesome boomer. Tommy decided three stacks of diamonds would be a reasonable amount for the hit, though many would later see this as a mistake, as this was a big reason for what some call the Great Depression of Business Bay. They made the offer to Tubbo, and at first, he was against the idea, as him and Pete were on good terms, and Pete was also AFK fishing. However, Tommy and Bit eventually coaxed Tubbo to accept by taunting him and challenging his ability to be a hitman. The transaction was agreed upon, with Tubbo taking the diamonds and shortly after flying to China to bury them in a secret chest so no one else could take them. Tommy and Bitzel actually arrived at the Big Boomer train station, before Tubbo, where Pete was located. This was due to him storing his diamonds. Soon after, Tubbo met up with the two at the station, and they watched him plan and carry out his hit against Pete. Keep in mind, Pete was AFK fishing, so there was really nothing he could do to defend himself. Tubbo decided the best plan of action was to drown Pete, so there would be no evidence in chat that he was the one who caused Pete to die. Tubbo threw an AFK Pete into the water, but soon realized that his fishing rod would break if he continued trying to drown him. Tubbo then went into Pete's line of sight and was killed by his fishing rod. Yes, Tubbo got killed by Pete when he wasn't even at his keyboard. That's not a pro gamer move at all. As Bit and Tommy died laughing, Tubbo was confused and shocked to how he had died. Shortly after this, Calvin logged on, and if you don't know who Calvin is, well, he's good at PvP. And Tommy is very afraid of him. Calvin asked them to get away from Pete, but they smoothly stated they were simply there watching the event ensue. Throwing off your biggest threat could be a good idea, but if Calvin found out it was actually a hit from Business Bay, things could have gotten bad. Tommy and Bitzel then decided to run from the Antarctic Empire to get back their diamonds from Tubbo, and because of Calvin logging on. Tommy asked for the diamonds to be returned, because Tubbo did not complete the hit, but Tubbo claimed that since he died, Pete must have the diamonds. We all know this was a bluff, so Tubbo could keep the diamonds, but come on, at that point after getting killed by an AFK person, you don't deserve those diamonds. Calvin then logged onto the server and found Tommy. He started attacking him and eventually killed him. After that, they fought again, but it ended in a stalemate because the fight wasn't leading anywhere. 
They then chatted with Pete and Calvin for a few minutes, discussing the situation and the recent fight. Pete then stated he did not have the diamonds that Tubbo said he had. Tubbo had been outed. Tommy then instantly remembered that Tubbo had flown to China before coming to the Big Boomer train station because they arrived before him. Tommy then fessed up to Pete and told him that he paid Tubbo to kill him, but only because he wanted to see if Tubbo would actually do it. Pete wasn't angry. If anything, he thought it was hilarious Tubbo died to him while he was AFK. Calvin then logged out of the server, along with Bitzel who had to go to Walmart. Pete and Tommy were the only ones in the group online, so they decided to find Tubbo and pay him a visit to retrieve the diamonds that he stole. Tommy was then sent a clip by one of his viewers, in which it showed Tubbo depositing the diamonds in a secret underground chest. Tommy then instantly got into a VC with Tubbo, and stated he knew where the diamonds were. Tubbo and Tommy both raced over to the area in China where his diamonds were hidden. Tubbo got there first, and retrieved the diamonds that were in the chest. This angered Tommy, as those were his only diamonds that Business Bay had. They then flew to Tubbo's volcano island he was making, to be fair, it's an insanely epic build. Tubbo then threatened to throw some of the diamonds into the lava, to which Tommy fought back with claims of blowing up his entire volcano with TNT. Tommy then enderpearled over the tree Tubbo was on, which caused him to jump off the tree and into the lava below. All of Business Space diamonds had been destroyed. For a few moments, Tommy couldn't believe it, but they were actually gone. Tubbo then logged out of the server, but later rejoined as it was just part of the bit. Tommy and Pete then met up with Tubbo and killed him, but in the process, they accidentally also blew up the note block version of Megalovania. A few days later, Tommy was online and saw Tubbo near his base. Tommy had to borrow Time Dio's equipment, as he had lost all of his previous gear to wars and the huge hole that led into the void. Tubbo appeared right in front of him, with no gear on, so Tommy uses the elevator sign to go up to his MLG deck where he MLG water buckets from. Tommy shot at Tubbo a few times, missing every single one, but then he jumped off in an attempt to MLG water bucket. Tommy flew towards the ground at mock speeds, aiming a bow at Tubbo. Tommy fired, missed, and hit the ground, failing the MLG. Tubbo then walked over to Tommy's corpse, and grabbed all of his items, instantly becoming more geared than Tommy. Tommy then realized this, and respawned, and dashed over to his chest area to grab some items to fight back with. But before he could put on any armor, Tubbo came over and killed Tommy. Tommy then got killed multiple times by Tubbo, claiming it wasn't cool, but Tubbo just kept killing him. Tommy finally got a chance and ran into Time Dio's bunker that held lots of war gear. Tommy stocked up on gear, getting himself some decent armor and lots of healing, but still nowhere near his original set. Before Tommy could leave the war bunker though, Tubbo rewired the redstone exit to be a fall trap. So when Tommy tried to get out of the bunker, he fell to his death. Tommy then respawned again and got all of his gear and went out to challenge Tubbo once again. Tubbo and Tommy then decided to discuss the situation, and Tubbo led him over to Tommy's office. And if you don't know, underneath the floorboards of Tommy's office lies a hole that leads into the void. Tommy was reluctant to enter, but after destroying much of the wood floor and replacing it with obsidian, the two left the room. Tommy then grabbed a bucket of water and then went up to the MLG platform with Tubbo. Tommy then destroyed much of the glass, turning the platform into a sumo arena. He then destroyed the sign, so both of them were stuck up there and unable to get down. Tommy then started to attack Tubbo. The two had an epic duel, with amazing music playing in the background. Tommy's resolve would not allow himself to lose to Tubbo once again. They continued fighting, when suddenly, Tommy got flung off the platform. Tommy was falling to his imminent death, and then, he remembered he had an elytra in his inventory, and then, he activated the Elytra's flying ability just a few meters from the ground, surviving what would have been a lethal fall. Even Tubbo was impressed with this. Tubbo then MLG water bucketed back onto the ground, once again facing off with Tommy. Tommy then ran into his house with very low armor. He then distracted Tubbo so he could place a button and activate his piston door, which would bring him into an all-white room. Tubbo claimed that he knew it was down there, but entered anyways and killed Tommy. Tommy then negotiated with Tubbo after respawning, claiming that once Dio, Bitzel, and Luke got on, he would be more than dead. This prompted Tubbo to hand over some of Tommy's gear, but this was a huge mistake. Tubbo sort of knew what Tommy was going to do, so he got in a plane to have an easy escape if Tommy attacked him. Tubbo tried placing some gear in the chest, but Tommy quickly slayed him. Tommy retrieved all of Dio's gear and was now winning this war. 
Tubba respawned in a few of the beds that Business Bay had, but ultimately, Tommy destroyed all of them and killed Tubba multiple times. Tubba then spawned back at the SMP Earth hub. Tommy had done it. He had finally won a war on his own.